Hello friends, welcome again today. In this video, I am going to talk about the process of photophosphorylation. As the name suggests photophosphorylation, so this reaction is occurring in the presence of light and uh, uh, this is mainly the process where the assimilatory powers are generated like an ATP and an ADPH. These, uh, uh, these powers are generated during this process that's why these are known as photophosphorylation and this term was given by Arnon basically the, he uh, gave the term for the assimilatory power that is ATP and NADPH so in this process uh, ATP and NADP are, NADPH2 are generated during this process and we all know that uh, in, the pre in the plants photosynthesis occurring in the leaves in the chloroplast so in the chloroplast there are different uh, molecules which absorb different wavelengths of light we all know that chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B and many another, uh, many another pigments are absorbed different uh, wavelength and um, absor absorb different wavelength and then they help in the production of sugar molecule that is glucose which is the main product of photosynthesis reaction. So this photosynthesis reaction um, is uh, completed is completed in the dark reaction so dark reaction that is the c3 cycle or kelvin melvin melvin kelvin cycle so uh, the main product of that reactions are sugar pro, uh, sugar molecule that is uh, glucose but for the process of dark reactions there is a, there is a requirement of energy and this energy is obtained in the form of atp and nadph NADP H2. So this uh, um, energy is generated during the process of light reaction. So this light reaction is all is known as photophosphorylation because it is occurring in the presence of light. So in the light reaction, what is happening? Basically, there is uh, some photosystems. You, we can say pigment system. So uh, these pigment systems are made up of main. Uh, main reaction center pigment that is uh, it can be chlorophyll A or it can be chlorophyll B and many another accessory pigments like uh, carotenoids, phycobilins, xanthophylls all these accessory pigments surround the main reaction center and form a photosystem. So this photosystem can be photosystem 1, photosystem 2 or uh, these uh, um, these photosystems are numbering according to their discovery and uh, these are the photosystems which absorb different type of wavelength like uh, uh, p photosystem 1 as uh, you can see here of ps2 photosystem 2 it absorbs uh, um, it absorbs the wavelength of 680 nanometer and photosystem 1 which absorbs the uh, light of wavelength uh, light of wavelength 700 nanometer so in these photosystems chlorophyll a is a reaction center and many photosystem many uh, pigment like carotenoids xanthophyll and phycobilins are surround the photosystem so these are the no uh, in this video i'm going to talk about only the non cyclic reaction of the photophosphorylation and there is another also there is also uh, one another cycle which is a cyclic react cyclic um, reaction in which there is only formation of atp but in non cyclic there is formation of atp and nadph both nadph to both so um, these cycles are basically used to produce uh, produce the energy currency that is ATP and NADP H2 and this all process uh, and this non cyclic process occurring in the place of thylakoid intermembrane space and in the aerobic conditions and for these reactions light should be uh, light should be optimum so what is happening here basically as you can see this is photosystem 2 in which chlorophyll A is molecule is surrounded by many other accessory pigment and this chlorophyll A um, chlorophyll a absorbs the wavelength of 680 nanometer when it absorb uh, photo when this photosystem absorbs 6, 680 nanometer wavelength the electrons which is present inside this molecule in this antenna complex antenna complex are basically um, the system in which both accessory pigments and uh, reaction center pigment both are involved so this antenna complex gets energy and the electron present in gets excited when these electrons gets excited then these electrons are accepted by the first electron acceptor of photosystem 2 that is pheophytin in which magnesium is absent so this pheophytin um, pheophytin accept the electron which is transported by the photosystem 2 and which get uh, or which get gets excited by the photosystem 2 in the presence of light 
so when this pheophytin absorb uh, pheophytin except electron then many another acceptor of electron are present downhill like as you can see here plastoquinone cytochrome b6 f complex and plastocyanin these are three main uh, these are three main another electron acceptor which is present downhill uh, so in this plasto so uh, after the pheophytin um, after the pheophytin the another electron acceptor is plastoquinone and in which iron is present after plastoquinone um, there is another electron acceptor which is cytochrome b6 f complex and when uh, when plastocyanin accept electron from the cytochrome b6 f complex then there is release of energy which energy uh, was which energy uh, was accepted by electron when it gets excited from this photosystem to to first electron acceptor this energy is released in the form of this this energy is released here from the cytochrome b6 f complex to plastocyanin and this energy gets converted this energy is uh, get is obtained by the adp and formed a form atp molecule so there is formation of one atp molecule by this uh, electron transferring system so uh, after the when plastocyanin when there is a electron at the site of plastocyanin then this electron transported to another photosystem first in which there is chlorophyll is a is the reaction center and many another accessory pigment again surround it but this photosystem first absorb wavelength of photo uh, absorb wavelength of 700 nanometer and when this electron reached at the photosystem one after the acceptance of this electron this photosystem first again again transport this electron to their first electron acceptor iron sulfide iron sulfide is the first electron acceptor of photosystem first remember pheophytin is the first electron acceptor of photosystem 2 and iron sulfide is the first electron acceptor of photosystem 1 and photosystem 1 absorb wavelength 700 nanometer and photosystem 2 absorb wavelength 600 680 nanometer and when the electron reached at the at the first electron acceptor of photosystem 1 that is iron sulfide after that it again gets transported downhill so when it gets transported downhill then again many another electron acceptor are present here like ferrodoxin that is fd fd um, is a ferrodoxin another electron acceptor which absorb which accept electron from the iron sulfide and then this electron gets transported to the nadp NADP is a electron acceptor after uh, after getting hydrogen it gets converted into NADPH2 in the presence of NADP reductase and this enzyme is present in the outer surface of the outer membrane of thylakoid so this NADP reductase is present on the outer surface of the thylakoid membrane and this NADP gets electron from the uh, ferrodoxin but where from where NADP gets uh, reduced? So NADP gets reduced by the splitting of water. So in the lumen of thylakoid, there is a splitting of water. Water here, as you can see, this is water molecule, and it gets splitted into electron, oxygen molecule, and hydrogen. So water splitting is the only method by which photosystem two. Um, photosystem to obtain its electron again so these electrons supply and so water molecule uh, continuously supplying electron to the photosystem 2 and when light uh, when light falls on the photosystem 2 then these electron gets excited and the cycles again this cycle is uh, is also known as z scheme cycle because as you can see here this cycle firstly goes upward then goes downward then again goes upward and then again uh, again goes downward so this is the uh, that's this there is a formation of alphabet z that's why it is known as z scheme reaction and from the splitting of water water hydrolysis there is uh, um, there is formation of hydrogen molecule and these hydrogen from the lumen goes into the uh, intermembrane space of thylakoid and with the NADP, they form NADP H2 in the presence of NADP reductase. So by the non-cyclic reaction, we get both the assimilatory power that is ATP from the cytochrome B6 complex to plastocyanin 
uh, when electron comes from for cytochrome b6 f complex to plastocyanin then uh, these electron release energy in the form of atp and again when electron are accepted by the by the nadp from the ferrodoxin then it again form nadph2 and this nadph2 again gives three molecule of atp so this is a whole process in which assimilatory powers are obtained that is atp and uh, nadph2 and these assimilatory powers or that uh, or these energy currencies are used in the dark reaction for the formation of glucose molecule that is the main product of photosynthesis there is another also cycle that is a cyclic uh, reaction of the photophosphorylation in the cycle rea cyclic re reaction there is only formation of um, ATP molecule there is no reduction of NADP to NADPH2 so only ATP is obtained in the cyclic process and in the non-cyclic process both ATP molecule and NADPH2 is obtained so this was a whole cycle about the photophosphorylation non-cyclic reaction in, which is which occur in the presence of light that's why it is also known as light reaction and light dependent reaction but dark reactions are also dependent on the light because they indirectly depend on the product of the non-cyclic reaction as you can see ATP and NADPH2 these reactions these energies are used um, in the dark reaction for the formation of glucose molecule so I hope this video will help you and uh, cyclic uh, reaction will be uploaded in the next video. Thank you friends.